Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we've seen resistors, capacitors, and inductors, we're ready to compare them to one another. We'll compare them in terms of the voltage across them, the current through them, the power consumed by them, the energy that can be stored by them, how to add up and find the equivalent series resistance, or I should say the equivalent series total, or the equivalent series circuit, and the equivalent parallel circuit. As far as the voltage across, for a resistor, it's simply the product of the current times the resistance. So V across the resistor is IR. But V across the capacitor is equal to 1 over the capacitance times the integral of the current times dt. However, the voltage across an inductor is simply the inductance times the time derivative of the current through the inductance. But if we're trying to find the current through the devices for a resistor, it's simply Ohm's law, I equals V over R. For a capacitor, notice how the equation here for the current through the capacitor is similar in form as the voltage across an inductor. And notice that the current through an inductor is the same as the voltage across a capacitor. Here you can see that the current through a capacitor is simply the capacitance times the time rate of change of the current. And here the current through an inductor is 1 over the inductance times the integral of the voltage times dt. How much power is consumed by these devices? Well, it turns out only the resistor can consume power. The power consumed by a resistor is I square R, or the power that can be provided to a resistor is the current times the voltage. In essence, you get the same number, but they're typically used for different purposes. Power consumed and power provided. As far as a capacitor and inductor, a pure capacitor and a pure inductor cannot consume any power whatsoever. You can simply store energy in it, get the energy back out of it, but it cannot actually consume. Now, of course, that's an ideal capacitor, an ideal inductor. In the real world, inductance always will have some internal resistance because of the wire that's coiled up. And, of course, even in a capacitor, there will be a minute amount of resistance. But again, typically we ignore that and we simply say that there's no power consumed in either capacitor or the inductor. Energy stored? Well, a resistor cannot store energy, but capacitors can. And the energy stored is one-half the capacitance times V squared. The energy stored in an inductor is one-half the inductance times I squared. Again, notice the similarity in the form of the equation, except here it's relative to the voltage squared, the voltage across capacitor, and here the inductance stores energy as current flows through the inductor. Finally, when you have resistors in series, you simply add them together to get the equivalent or total resistance, just like you do for inductances. But when it comes to capacitors, when they're in series, 1 over the capacitance total equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus however many you have, all in series. So the capacitor here bucks the trend from the resistor and the inductor. But when we're trying to find the parallel equivalents, then you can see that with capacitors, when you place capacitors in parallel, you simply add them together. But for resistors and inductors, when they're in parallel, you use the 1 over formula. 1 over the resistance total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so forth. If there's only two of them, you could use the product over the sum rule. In other words, you could also use that R total is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So with only two resistors, you could use the product over the sum rule. Same for inductors. The rule is exactly the same. 1 over the inductance total equals 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus however many there are. But if there's only two of them, again, you can use the product over the sum rule. So this is a very nice overview of the various components, resistors, capacitor, inductors, and how they relate to one another when it comes to the voltage across, the current through, the power consumed by, the energy stored in, the series equivalent, and the parallel equivalent formulas. That's how we can keep things straight.